In this lesson, we're going to discuss the intermolecular forces that hold molecules close together in liquids. These forces result from the attractions between partial positive and negative charge areas on the molecules. And an analogy is the attraction between opposite poles on a set of magnets. In the case of molecules, the stronger the areas of positive and negative charge, the stronger the intermolecular attractions. We generally talk about four different types of intermolecular forces. These are ranked from weakest to strongest attraction. Dispersion forces are found between nonpolar molecules or atoms. Polar molecules have a permanent separation of charge. This is also known as a dipole. Interactions between polar molecules are known as dipole-dipole attractions. Hydrogen bonds are a special class of dipole-dipole attractions. They reflect an especially strong molecular dipole that forms when hydrogen is directly bound to either nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. And finally, ion dipole attractions are the strongest of the intermolecular forces. These develop between the full charge of dissociated ions and the partial charges found on polar molecules. Let's examine each of these in more detail. The weakest force, dispersion, is caused by temporary dipoles that develop in nonpolar molecules or atoms. Let's consider how this can happen. We'll look at an atom of helium as a simple nonpolar particle that's composed of two electrons orbiting around the nucleus. Now these electrons are in constant motion. In the diagram here, we see the same particle of helium over three separate frames, representing three different points in time. In frame one and frame two, the electrons are located on opposite sides of the nucleus. They balance each other out and there's no partial positive or negative charges that develop. In frame three, however, the random motions of the electrons result briefly in the two electrons being on the same side of the nucleus. When this happens, a temporary partial negative charge develops on that side of the atom. And a temporary partial positive charge develops on the opposite side where the nucleus is no longer shielded. The temporary dipole in one atom of helium can then induce a similar temporary dipole on a neighboring atom. In this diagram, we see three separate different atoms of helium. In the first atom, the partial positive and negative sections develop temporarily due to the random motion of the electrons. But the partial positive on one side then attracts the electrons on the neighboring atom of helium, pulling them to one side and developing a partial negative. This is an induced dipole. It creates a partial positive on the opposite side of that atom of helium, which attracts the electrons in the next atom. This creates a partial negative and a partial positive on the opposite side. And this continues down the line. Now, when more electrons are involved in the temporary dipole formation, stronger partial positive and negative charges can develop and the strength of the dispersion force can increase. In other words, the larger the nonpolar molecule, the more electrons that can be temporary pull, temporarily pulled to one side and the stronger the dispersion force. The dipoles are temporary though, and the interaction is brief. So it's important to remember that dispersion forces are still the weakest of all of the intermolecular interactions. In polar molecules, the position of strongly electronegative atoms produces permanent dipoles. In the hydrogen chloride molecules depicted here, electrons are drawn more strongly to the green chlorine atom on the side because of its higher electronegativity. The permanent nature of this dipole results in a stronger intermolecular attraction. Polar molecules that contain a hydrogen atom directly bound to either nitrogen, 
oxygen, or fluorine develop particularly strong partial positive and negative charges. This is because these particular atoms have very high electronegativities, and hydrogen only has one electron to share. When that electron that it's sharing is drawn more strongly towards the other atom, it leaves hydrogen with more of an exposed nucleus. This makes for a very strong partial positive charge. And it's the basis of hydrogen bonding. It's important to note that the hydrogen must be directly bound to these highly electronegative atoms to develop the strong dipole associated with hydrogen bonding. Water is an excellent example of a molecule that exhibits hydrogen bonding. Two hydrogen atoms are directly bound to one central oxygen atom. The bonding electrons are drawn strongly to the oxygen, leaving the positive charge of the hydrogen nucleus more exposed. The strong partial charges that develop result in a particularly strong intermolecular attraction that's responsible for the high boiling point of water. It's important to note that hydrogen bonding refers to an intermolecular attraction, not an actual chemical bond. The hydrogen bonding forces between molecules are still much weaker than the actual covalent bonding forces found within the molecule. Molecules that contain hydrogen bound directly to either oxygen or nitrogen are particularly abundant in biology. This means that hydrogen bonding is one of the major intermolecular forces at work in biological molecules. It can influence things like protein shape and function and how substrates bind to enzymes. One example is the influence it has on the shape of DNA. Hydrogen bonds that form between the nucleotide bases that are found in each strand of DNA ultimately allow it to form the classic double helix shape that we're familiar with. The strongest intermolecular attractions occur between dissociated ions and polar molecules. A classic example of this type of interaction is found in the dissolving of an ionic compound, like potassium chloride, in water. The positively charged end of each water molecule associated with the hydrogen atoms is attracted to the full negative charge of the chloride ion. While the negatively charged portion of the water molecule associated with the oxygen atom is attracted to the full positive charge of the potassium ions. Each ion attracts multiple small water molecules which can surround the ions and make it easier to separate them from each other. To summarize, there are four types of intermolecular forces, ranging in strength from the weakest dispersion forces to the strongest ion dipole attractions. The major factor influencing the strength of these forces is the polarity of the molecules involved and the strength of the charges that develop.